Good evening, everyone, y muy buenas noches a todos. Gracias y bienvenidos a su fundación, the California Endowment. Thank you, and welcome to your foundation, the California Endowment. My name is Marta Jimenez, and I'm the executive vice president and counsel for the California Endowment. I'm truly honored to welcome each and every one of you to this evening's event, which marks the official launch of the next and most important phase of our Latino-focused health coverage and enrollment effort, the Asegurate campaign. During last year's health coverage enrollment period, the Asegurate campaign, supported by the endowment and implemented by our statewide community partners, was instrumental in securing health coverage for over three million Californians, many of whom never thought they would ever be able to have health coverage. These are gains that cannot and must not be lost. Which is why we are here this evening and why this year's enrollment period, which begins on November 15th and lasts through February 15th, is so important. Fortunately, we were helped immensely last year by an amazing woman who dedicated her voice, her valuable time, and her resources to this critical effort. And I'm beyond delighted to tell you that she is here tonight to help us launch this year's Asegurate campaign. Cristina Saralegui is an extraordinary woman. She is a wife, mother, media legend, businesswoman, author, advocate for health empowerment, and of course, our own Latina media legend. In her career as a journalist and 21 years as host of the Cristina Show on Univision, Cristina won the hearts of millions of Latinos by fearlessly addressing issues such as AIDS, sexual education for teenagers, and many other issues which were taboo within the Spanish language television and Latino community. The Cristina Show garnered 12 Emmys, coined Cristina's catchphrase, palante, or moving forward, and cemented her position as one of the most powerful voices for Latinos, all while changing attitudes and opening a dialogue for Latinos to talk about the issues that impact our lives each and every day. Over the past year, the endowment has been fortunate to have worked with Cristina, who has been an incredible ambassador to the Latino community as part of the Asegurate campaign through television, public service announcements, informational booklets, and social media, Cristina has been tireless in helping to raise awareness about the benefits of health coverage under the Affordable Care Act. Cristina recognizes the urgency of informing Latinos about health coverage. Prior to the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, Latinos represented the highest rate of uninsured of any demographic in California and represented nearly two-thirds of Californians without health coverage. In the past year, 1.1 million Latinos have enrolled in health coverage and has changed the course of their health and their lives. We cannot thank Cristina enough for her selfless dedication and for being such an extraordinary partner. And speaking of extraordinary partners, I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge the numerous partners statewide that contributed toward the success of the Asegurate campaign. You see many of them behind me uh, it, right now listed. They have knocked on doors, made phone calls, helped people enroll into healthcare coverage, and renew their benefits. Their hard work is the foundation for our success. Let's give them, please, a big round of applause. Here's a slide with a list of our partners. We thank them all very much for all of their hard work. Tonight, we have a unique opportunity to speak with Cristina and learn about her commitment to the health and well-being of the Latino community. We're very lucky to have her during such a busy time because as you know, she just recently released her new book, I'm showing it right here, Rise Up and Shine, My Secrets for Success in Career, Relationships, and Life, Palante, where she speaks openly about her personal story, the challenges she has faced, and what fuels her passion to affect change. Copies of Cristina's book are available in the lobby for those of you who are interested, and many of them have been personally signed by Cristina. 
Joining Cristina, we have invited representatives of four organizations to inform our conversation this evening. These organizations address health and societal concerns in our communities and have a unique connection with some of the new benefits available under the health law that many still don't know about and that can greatly benefit from. These entities, A Woman's Nation, Equality California, Mental Health America of Los Angeles, and California Latinas for Reproductive Justice. They will provide resources, education, informational services, and programs, and can help us reach out to these vulnerable and hard to reach individuals that comprise the over one million Californians that still do not have access to health insurance coverage. As you can see, we're going to have an amazing conversation this evening, and we're delighted to have as our moderator, Maril Celis, Content Marketing and Community Affairs Director for the West Region of one of our Asegurate Spanish media partners, Impremedia. She is also a digital entrepreneur, holistic health expert, and co-founder of the Sylvie and Maril Holistic Lifestyle brand. So now, without further ado, Please welcome Cristina Saralegui and Maril Celis. Thank you. Bienvenida, Cristina. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Perdón, esta noche tengo tenis porque tengo un pie fastidiado. Y, uh, y me cuesta trabajo subir y bajar escaleras, pero el corazón lo tengo bien puesto y el cerebro también, así que we shall talk about stuff that's very good. Mariel, this is yours, that's mine. Pásenme. Gracias. Renan and Andrea, I know you guys are here, even though I can't see you. Everybody and all of this is your family because we all grew up with you, didn't we? Gracias a todos. Claro que sí. Yeah. Thank you for being here tonight, Cristina. You know, it's an honor for me. As a journalist, having grown up with you, and as a fan, and as a, you know, having you, as you say in your book, always have a mentor, having you as a, you know, sort of a mentor that I would watch on TV, and, you know, Cristina is a legend, you know, all of us who grew up with her know the impact she's had on our community, on Hispanic people, as well as women, as well as anybody who can't speak for themselves. She's such an empowering being, and, uh, you know, I know that Marta gave a great introduction, so let's just get started because I'm sure everybody wants to hear directly from Cristina. Thank you. So Cristina, you know, of course it's an honor to be here with you and I know that you've been up to a lot lately and I think we could probably go into a little bit of what you've been up to recently, including the book, as well as the Asegurate campaign, which as you know has helped uh, enroll about two million people into Medi-Cal and uh, has made this state the number one state for enrollment in its first year. Congratulations. Well, congratulations ah, to you. <laughs> to you. Yes. Well, obviously, um, I'm very happy to be here because when I was approached by the endowment to do the Asegurate campaign last time, uh, and we finally did the ads and they came out pretty, and I went to the White House, but then when we got the two million people signing up, that means it worked. And I'm very happy because I was explaining that many of my people, the Latinos, they, they want everything to be magical, they want everything to be okay, but then they don't vote. They don't go out and vote. And I have been, since I've been on TV with this big mouth that God gave me, I've been telling them you want things to change, go out and change them, you know? So I'm very happy to be involved with the endowment for a second year, and I hope we can get two million more. Ah, what do you think? We can do it. We can do it. Yo creo que sí. Y, uh, y es importante. It's very important. I've had a lot of uh, health issues in my life and my family, my kids, my grandkids. Uh, right now, I have a, a condition that is neurological uh, that I didn't even know how to spell. I put that in my book also, uh, which uh, it affects my balance. Now, I want you guys to know that I was a runner when I was in my 50s still. I can't walk straight, I bang myself. Uh, I was a water skier, I can't ski anymore, I can hardly swim. And you know what, health is so, so important because we all take it completely for granted. I mean, something like when I retire, I'm gonna travel, I'm gonna see the world because I don't have to go to work. And you know what, I wonder if you're gonna be able to walk straight, I can't. So, it's very important, some people take better care of their cars 
then they take care of themselves, you know. And that is why I think health is numero uno antes que todos los demás. And you talk about this in your book, I know, uh, chapter 16, I think, you say, without health, there is no life. And this is true, and this is partly why, um, you know, for us in the Asaguete campaign, it was, you know, and you and I talked about this, it was very important to get Latinos to understand, you know, it's not just that health is important, it's the basis of everything, right? For you, you say, invest in yourself as well. And you and I were talking about how, well, invest in your health is really investing in yourself. Well, you know, everybody knows that when they're feeling very sick and they stay home from school or work, you can't do anything. I mean, you're in bed. That's it. And uh, you have to understand that that is not a goal. Uh, so you have to fight against that. How do you fight? You learn to prevent the problem before it happens. But you can't prevent it if you don't know how. And you know what? If I smoke, I drank, you know, I can't complain now that my feet won't work. I had a blast. I danced all that I was going to dance already, so now i got to be a good grandma. The problem is that I can't be on the floor playing Barbie with my four-year-old granddaughter because it takes a truck to pull me up, <laughs> seriously. So how do you, how do you uh, fight disease? By preventing it. How do you prevent it? By information. And this is what the endowment is all about, the California endowment. It's teaching people how to protect themselves. It's availing them of the weapons so they can actually use that to get out of the hole once they're in there, which is very, very, very important. I bet, like, I had something that I, we wrote about in the book, and she was talking to me about, I have, a, I have a, one son. We, my husband and I, when we got married 31 years ago, we had his, mine, and ours uh, family. He had a little girl, I had a little girl, and then we had a little boy. Well, that little boy, when he was 19, uh, tried to kill himself. Uh, his girlfriend broke up with him. He thought it was the end of his world. Uh, I had no clue that all of that was going on. Why? Because I was working, and my husband was working with me. Like most families that work so hard that they don't see the devil when it's inside their house. Uh, my little boy at 19, which is the age, by the way, that bipolar disease creeps into a person's life. You can tell by magical means. You know in the teenage years it's hormonal. It mm. starts then. Uh, I just started realizing that I have been doing a talk show for 20 years. For No, not 20. I have been doing it for 12 years when that happened. And I had done so many shows on mental illness. Me, a journalist, and I had no clue what was wrong with Joe Marcos. No clue. So imagine the rest of the people that do not do talk shows, that are not journalists, that don't have to do their homework about it. That happened to me. So then I got informed too late. But now, for 10 years, that boy was uh, going from hospital to hospital until they could tell me what he had. Because there's degrees of this sickness, you know? It's just not number two, number four. There's like really, it can get really bad. Joe Marcos was taking, I don't know, 16 medications. Wow. And as we all know, psychiatric medications work, they're very dangerous. And they work many times one against the other. And uh, right now, uh, after 10 years of going to dance in that show and smile to, with all my viewers, and going back home and going to bed, to his bed and smelling his t-shirt that I told the nanny not to wash and missing him to death. Mm -hmm. And my husband coming to get me and say, Mama, we gotta go to bed. Come to your room. I miss you too. And sort of said, bulldog, you know, come to your come to your bed. And that took me ten years until I got my son back. He's in my house now. He told me, Mommy, I think I wanna go back to college. Oh, gracias, Dios mío. Gracias. Aplausos para eso. Gracias, gracias, gracias. So it's almost over. It is, and you know, I think um, it's so heartwarming to read. You know, you sharing everything about your Marcos, and you know, the, the, also the situation with your mom and Alzheimer's. Everything that you open up about in the book, it just really makes us all think about what are the things we don't talk about with Latinos. You know, I know that you have bits in your book where, where you say, "De esto no se habla." We don't talk about this. These are the things we don't talk about as, as uh, Latinos or as women uh, or as a community. Why is it so important for Latinos to really, really reach out for information about health and healthcare? 
because that's the only way that you can uh, take care of yourself and your family. It's not making money. It's not working to death. It's actually learning. Nowadays, the situation has gotten so tough in the streets with AIDS, with kids shooting each other in schools, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to get be depressing because I don't want to be depressed. That uh, the only thing that you can give your kids is a weapon because the streets are a war. In this, the number one best country in the world, hands down. It's a war. And what do you give your kids? You give them a gun. What is the gun? It's called information. So that when they have to make a decision, like have unprotected sex, they can actually make an informed decision of not to do it, OK? Or all the marijuana that's around now. I'm from the 60s. I remember what was around then. What's around now is like chemical-treated marijuana. People are dropping off like flies, dying. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they have to know this. I remember when I started the show, the biggest problem was that the grandmas were mad at me. And they, used, they used to call me and tell me, Christina, you can't talk about those things. You know, at that hour in the afternoon, the kids are home from school at 3. I said, Grandma, I'm saying that for the kid, not for you. You already know it. <laughs> you know, they yeah. need to know. They need to know. We cannot go like this to them and keep them pure. I wish we could. We can't. We need them to know. Yeah, we need to know. And we need them to know, and in order for that to happen, we need to be very informed ourselves, right? It's up to us uh, to also share this information with them, to expose them to that kind of information. There are a few organizations and a few causes that are very dear and near to your heart. I know that because you talked about this, that these are things that not only uh, throughout your career you have been pushing for, but also it's personal because it's related to your family. And um, these organizations, some of these leaders from these community organizations are here today. And I'd like to actually bring them on to the stage so that they can have a conversation with us as well and share with us all the work that they have been doing uh, for each of these uh, causes. Uh, first, I'd like to bring on stage a woman's nation represented by Executive Director Erin Mulcahy stein Hi, Erin. It's your turn. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Second, I'd like to bring up Equality California, represented by Executive Director Rick Zaber. Hi, Rick. Hello. How are you? Mental Health America of Los Angeles, represented by President and CEO David Pilon. Hello, David. How are you? I'm well. And I love David. He brought me cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, California Latinas for Reproductive Justice, represented by Executive Director Laura Jimenez. Arriba, Laura. Laura, welcome. So, you know, I know Rick and I were discussing Cristina's book. He read it in one day, I read it in two days. He's fast. He's faster, <laughs> yes. And, um, and we were both fascinated by how much you ch shared and how much you opened up about all these causes that these wonderful leaders represent. And I'd like to maybe start with Erin, who represents uh, not just you know, women's issues, but as well as Alzheimer's. And this is something that's very near to Cristina's heart, because this is something you went through with your mom. Yeah, my mom passed from Alzheimer's. Mm. So I think it's horrible to her. If you want to share a little bit of, of how this sort of touched you, and, and as well as I think you mentioned how it's a, it's a family deal, isn't it? It doesn't just touch one individual. It's something that affects everybody. And maybe, Erin, you can let us know a little bit about what you think Latinos need to know about this disease. Well, Latinos and everyone in this country needs to know about the disease. It is, it's devastating to not only the person suffering with the, with the disease of Alzheimer's, but the family and the caregivers. So um, uh, interestingly, uh, Latinas have a one and a half times chance to have the disease than, than, than non-Latinos. See, I didn't know that. Right, and, it, and well, that's where we're getting at, is, is what, and what you were talking about before is information, <clears throat> is we all need to 
get the information about what Alzheimer's is and what it isn't and what it does to your family if you're not ready for it. Um, what it does to your family even when you're ready is, can be quite devastating, but if you put your head in the sand and you're afraid to you know, get tested or you're afraid to talk about the fact that you're dealing with a loved one that has the disease because it's, there's, you know, there's a stigma attached, then you're really, really you know, putting you and your family at a disadvantage because if you do take advantage of screenings, you can find out if you're predisposed or you have um, cognitive impairment and then that can at least, at the very least, get your family prepared to, you know, what your care plan is going to be. So I think that that's what I'd say is the most important thing. I think it's key because, and I, Rick, you and I were talking about this backstage because of something that you mentioned that these are the things that we don't talk about. De esto no se habla. So, you know, mental health, which is something that you are currently dealing with with young Marcos. Um, tell us a little bit, uh, Rick, about what you think we should know when it comes to mental health. So, the experience that you had with John Marcos is so typical of what many families experience because they don't actually get the help and there's a lot of shame around the whole issue and the stigma around mental health uh, challenges. And so the key is actually to help people to understand that it's not something to feel guilty about, as you point out in the book, um, that but that's a hard sell for a lot of people. It's like there's this feeling that somehow I've done something wrong or this is my responsibility or somehow something went you know, happened with, with that I did. And so part of the education is to help people understand that this is a biologically based illness and that anybody can have it. Um, but there's a lot of stigma out there. Um, but as you point out again in the book, it's like one in four people will experience a mental health challenge at some point in their life. Those are just the statistics of the National Institute for Mental Health. Um, so what we've done at Mental Health America is we're actually trying to educate the general public about what it is that they can do because everybody wants to do something but when you have a family member who's experiencing a challenge we're not sure what to do it's like we want it to go away we have but no clue what e to do e exactly so we are training people in an eight-hour course called mental health first aid Fantastic. Which, which really helps people to sort of understand those mental health issues and we offer it to everybody it's not just for professionals it's for family members it's for first responders it's for lots of different people um, and what that does then it gives people that way of of starting to actually listen to them non-judgmentally and actually make them feel comfortable expressing that fact that I'm having a challenge or something's not right with me and it also helps them to find the right resources out in the community so they can get professional help as well. One of the things that everybody asked me when the book came out is why didn't you talk about your son or what was going on before? Yeah. I said it's very tough because the kid was 19 years old. Talk about stigma. Imagine a resume when you're trying to get into school, trying to get in a job, sure. and that word is there forever following Absolutely. you. That's you know, right. it's, it's a big decision to make on the parents' part, whether to come out of the closet and do that or not. So what we decided to do is wait for him to be ready, for him to talk about it. And we had a column in People Magazine, and my husband, Marcos, asked him, John, do you mind if we talk about this? He goes, no, we need to talk about this. And he gave us permission to put it there and to write here. Also, I think that in the Hispanic world, we do not, we're not educated as to the symptoms of things to come. I'll give you an example. When this started happening, it was very fashionable in schools for teenagers to cut themselves. They would cut themselves, little cuts. And I would tell John, what is that? He goes, I hit myself. I said, that's a circle. You didn't hit yourself. So they took him to the psychiatrist for the school, and he called me in. And he says, that's called cutting, and they're all doing it in school. Why are they doing it? Because it's like witchcraft with a little guy with a, what's the name, Brujito? Harry Potter. <laughs> Everybody is looking into the witchcraft sites because Harry Potter does it. I said, maybe Harry Potter should not do it. So you know what? That was the first sign that I should have known but I didn't, didn't know that was a sign of anything. Well, and the fact that everybody's doing it doesn't make it okay. But kids, <laughs> you know how like, kids are. I know, kids are I, I know how kids are, but believe me, but um, we, we still have to recognize the, the 
underlying issues that are going on with, with somebody in that situation. And early intervention is absolutely key with helping people to get the help that they need. The earlier that you can actually get people the resources they need, the better the result. But I also want to say the good news is there is recovery after mental illness. And you were mentioning about your son going back to college. I'm glad to say that that's not just an isolated incident. It was like with the proper support, lots of people can actually recover the lives that they've lost as a result of their mental illness. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm full of hope. Good. Good. Absolutely. And another, uh, another cause that I know um, has been near and dear to your heart, you've always been such a big supporter of the LGBT community. And um, you know, maybe Equality California can share a little bit about what the, the work that you guys are doing um, you know, with relation to also the, the screenings and the things that are available through the Affordable Care Act now. Well, now that we've got marriage equality and the package of civil rights uh, protections in California, we've really started to focus on um, addressing the health and well-being of the LGBT community. Um, a lot of people think that the LGBT community is um, affluent and um, re really the uh, it faces many of the same um, things that all communities who've been the subject of discrimination and oppression face. Uh, the LGBT people are twice as likely to be living in poverty as uh, someone in the general public. Uh, higher, four times higher suicide rates for LGBT teens. That's really important. Um, you know, uh, high, higher rates of, um, uh, lower rates of, um, of health care coverage. Uh, really all of the, the things that you look at about to measure health and well-being of a community, the LGBT community uh, fares low on. And if you're a, if you're LGBT and uh, and a trans person, it's even worse. And if you're an LGBT person of color, it's even worse. Um, if you're arrested in um, in LA County, you have many, many multiple times higher uh, likelihood of being incarcerated as a result of an arrest if you're LGBT. And of course, those numbers go up if you're an LGBT person of color. So, we've really focused on program supported by the endowment to focus on health and well-being. We're uh, certified enrollment counselors, signed up uh, thousands and thousands of LGBT people under the Affordable Care Act and Medi-Cal. Um, a large percentage of those were uh, people uh, who were people of color. Uh, we now are starting a new program that the endowment uh, funded in which we are um, going to the Central Valley, uh, focusing on LGBT, uh, the undocumented community uh, in the Central Valley and trying to uh, educate healthcare providers about providing culturally competent care um, to LGBT people, but undocumented LGBT people. You know, it's really hard. Uh, one, uh, uh, it's, it's illegal to provide um, uh, certain kinds of coverage under government programs for the mm. undocumented. And, um, and if you think about it, uh, an LGBT person has different kinds of needs. So we're trying to educate health care providers on the needs of the LGBT undocumented in the Central Valley. And then we're trying to provide information to our community about where they can get health care coverage. So those are, uh, that's a new program that we're, um, that we're just starting and we're really excited about and, um, and really are thankful for the California Endowment for the support they've given us to allow us to, to, to do that work. Yeah, and much needed because, you know, with the uh, so with the campaign, we've been doing some videos. And I remember interviewing, um, uh, you know, some uh, transgender youth and, and them saying it's not just a barrier because as Latinos don't have, uh, we don't usually go to the doctor. It's also how do you get to the doctor as a, you know, transgender or LGBT person and so that the doctor is educated enough to understand your needs, right? You almost don't want to go. So I think it's really important work that, that you guys are doing. And that you know, is directly related also to um, California Latinas for Reproductive Justice. Uh, Laura, share a little bit about the work that you guys are doing as well. Um, well, at California Latinas for Reproductive Justice, we really center the lives and experiences of Latinas in all of our work, um, which we do through policy, advocacy, community education, and community-informed research. Um, and specifically related to the ACA, we know, um, you know, as you all know, that if you are educating the woman of the family, especially in Latino communities, that's how everybody's going to get to the doctor. So we've been really focusing recently on some campusing efforts and civic engagement work so that we get out to the, the Latinas in our communities to let them know what's available for them um, and how we're helping, how we're providing education. Um, it's also really important 
for us that um, they become engaged in what the different policy uh, advocacy and become advocates for themselves in these in these different things. Um, we know that California, in some respects, has done a lot better than a lot of the other states in the country, especially in respect to the Affordable Care Act. But we also know that we have pockets of our communities that, because they're undocumented or because they're young or because they're LGBT folks, um, they're not necessarily seeing the same access that other folks are. And so there's still a whole lot of work to be done here in California. And I think, you know, just to tie up what everyone here is saying, it's really important for us to be sharing our stories. I think, you know, the idea that, you know, we don't speak about certain things. And I think there's an assumption about what we as Latinas and Latinos speak about in our communities. We need to speak a lot more about all of these issues, including reproductive health and sexuality. And that's, that's the work that we do. Can you imagine a Spanish family talking about sex in their living room with the kids? Yes. I imagine it all the time. <laughs> it's not going to happen. OK, now, one of the problems is I always tell the mothers, the fathers, I said, the kids don't belong to the teacher. She didn't have them. They're protesting about sex education in schools. The kids belong to you. It's your responsibility to teach them not only about the mechanics, but about the morality, the morality. Now, I happen to be very lucky, because I come from a homos a G LGBTB? LGBT. <laughs> LGBT family, OK? We're five kids. My brother's gay. My sister's gay. I'm not gay, but they are. So Marcos will be glad about that. <laughs> yeah. Imagine me coming out of the closet here. Okay. Uh, be a new story. A, <laughs> I'd be proud. Yeah. It's very funny because they don't know what's going on either. Nobody talks to them about this, you know, and uh, they don't know what to do. My, my brother told me, Mati, can you please tell mom about me? Because I don't have the gumption to tell her I can't. So I told her, Mommy, do you know Iñaki's gay? She goes, for heaven's sake, I'm his mother. Of course I know. <laughs> The woman knew all the time, and there he is losing sleep over this. Aww. And I bet you that's so many more. There's a lot of things that Latinos don't talk about. And in, in the Alzheimer's situation, all of our grandparents forget stories, or they tell the same story 50 times. Abuela, eta chocha. She's gone. She's gone. But you know what? Nobody says, they're screening. That's right. Take her. That's right. But you know what? We have to understand that all of these things that we're talking about, they have a big cultural uh, difference between different countries of right. origin. So that's why we're all here together, because I really want to help. Even if I'm Cuban, I want to help all the other ones, too. <laughs> well, thank you, Christina, and thank you, everybody here, too. Um, I think we, um, we have a special thanks um, for all of you. I know, Christina, um, that you have a few words that you would like to share before um, we close out our program. But I'd like to first introduce um, some awards that we have for you guys that uh, Cristina is going to help us pass out. Uh, because I think the work that you all are doing is uh, supremely important, and so does Cristina, and so does the California Endowment. So let's uh, get some of these awards handed out to okay, you folks. Que lindo, se está. Acuérdate que yo estoy coja, camina tú. You will give them back. <laughs> I will bring them. I wish I could walk. Thank for you. For Women's Nation. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. <laughs> they are beautiful. Cristina, you hand it over. Este para cuál es? Para él. Para él. Todos son igualitos. Mi amigo. Gracias. Gracias por lo que haces. Gracias. Este para. Thank you for the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> she got some great Thank cookies back there. Oh yeah. <laughs> And I'll hand it over to her since you can't reach over, but. Thank you for what you do. Thank you very much. So Christina, I'd like to actually welcome um, Marta back on stage and uh, you know, so she can help us close out the program. But thank you everybody for um, being, for here. being here. And you know, we want to remind everybody, of course, that Saturday, November 15th, is when enrollment begins again into the Cover California Marketplace. And uh, we want you to remember also that Medi-Cal enrollment is year-round. So if you, uh, you know, qualify for that, please 
Go to asegurate.com to find out more information about how you guys can enroll. And I think we have something special yes. for Christina before we close out. A tree. <laughs> before, before we close out, please join me in thanking Maril for a wonderful moderation to this wonderful panel. Now, one of the things Cristina reminds us in her book is se tiene que echar unas flores, right? Yes. You have to give yourself some flowers. <laughs> because someone as destacada, someone who is so well known, who is so loved by all of us, who truly is the unique voice for the Latino community, and who's meant so much as a partner to the California Endowment, to truly remind us to enroll and to re-enroll. And she's now with us in this next campaign that's gonna be even more successful Thank than you. the first campaign. And we just want to let you know, Cristina, how much we love you, how much we thank you. A big round of applause, please, for Cristina. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias, gracias, Martita. They go with your outfit. Oh, how beautiful. Bueno, thanks for being here, and thanks for everything you do. And remember, when you talk about leaders, such as these people here, and organizations, they are made up of you. If you do not do anything, they can't move anything. So if you do not come, if you do not enroll, nothing is going to change. So by coming here tonight is one step. Let's follow the ball. It's going that way. Okay, so remember the 15th, you said? The 15th, this Saturday. Okay, asegúrense, asegúrense, asegúrense. Asegúrense. <laughs> Los quiero mucho a todos. Gracias. Thank you for being with me so many years. Palante, palante. Palante. Gracias, Martín. Gracias. They are beautiful. Thank you. Thank they you. match your outfit, I'm telling you. Thank God. <laughs> Let me move all this. Uh, should we take, uh, did you take one picture, all of us together? Here, let me move this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just want to oh. thank everybody for coming. I hope you guys got something from this, and I hope that, you know, you were able to get information from this, uh, oh, okay. each one of these wonderful organizations. Feel free to reach out to each one of these organizations so that you can get more information. And, um, and uh, again, enrollment starts on the 15th, and uh, enrollment into Medi-Cal is year-round. Asegurate.com for more information, uh, getcover.com for more information in English, and of course, Cristina's book is out, and I think uh, you can get a copy here. Um, I read it, it's wonderful. There's so much to learn about career, relationships, health, and how to make your dreams come true. So thank you very much for being here with us. Dios los bendiga a todos, gracias. Gracias. God bless. Okay, thank you all. Yeah.